My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on today's show, I'm, I'm having a player who I've never talked to a player from Coventry, so that is now going to be snapped on this podcast, as I have Charlotte Jordan with me, a senior point guard for the girls' basketball team. I appreciate you coming on, Charlotte. Thank you for having me. You know, there's a lot to go into. First off, you're a Warriors fan, so we'll get that out of the way. You liked them before they were quote-unquote good because of Steph Curry. I respect <laughs> it. Respect it. Um, but before we even get into your time at Coventry and such, the game of basketball, like any sport, finds players in different ways. How did the game find you? Um, I have been playing basketball since I was really young, mm. and it's always kind of spoken to me because it's been – I've loved it since the beginning I've been playing it and I love the fast pace of it. I love just always going up and down the floor, quick scoring. Uh, It's just always been very exciting. So I'm a huge basketball fan, but I love playing and I love coaching and it's just always been a part of my life. As you were progressing, right? And now did you play any other sports or was it just basketball? I, I've played softball when I was really young and soccer, but neither of those really stuck with me, but I played volleyball for four years um, in high school and I, I enjoyed volleyball, but it's nothing similar to basketball for me. (laughs) Yeah. Basketball is a little bit of a different game, which makes sense for what you've been able to do and kind of get to where you are now. We'll get into that later. Um, What about the game of basketball as you were growing up? What was it that kind of like made it stick with you where, like you said, you mentioned soccer, you know, softball, you played it, but obviously it didn't attract you enough to keep, you know, they couldn't keep you playing the sport, but basketball was different. What was it? You mentioned the speed aspect. Can you go, you know, into detail with that? I, I loved the fact that, you know, five players on the court, you always get, you're always touching the ball. You're always moving. You're always scoring it's very as it is fast paced you're always like you have a role all the time as where softball or soccer you're not always like touching the ball and staying really staying active because um you're standing around a lot of the time not as an insult to soccer or softball it's just very a different speed and Mm -hmm. I ended up loving like the Yukon women the Villanova men I'm I was a huge college fan NBA fan and watching basketball kept me playing basketball which I've always and then I just started practicing every day in my driveway playing full all year round since sixth grade so it's just you know I really just fell in love with it (laughs) I mean not not bad teams to like beyond the Warriors as far as winning titles I mean (laughs) UConn UConn women are pretty good last time I checked and the men were also very good I know they're struggling right now but again good um, and then Villanova men also fantastic. I mean, I know Jay Wright is no longer with the team. He's quote unquote right. retired, although I think he's going to come back because I see him on Fox sports and I'm like, okay, you want to go back and coach. I can tell, but <laughs> you no know, watching those teams. I mean, did any of, as you were growing up, I mean, were you able to translate what you were hearing from the broadcasters, what you were watching visually as far as to bring to your game now? I have, I always took on like how well both the, both UConn women and Villanova men move the ball. My dad went to Villanova, so I just have, it's always been on. We've always been watching them play and UConn so close to us that mm-hmm. we've always been a fan of their style and just the team play, the ball movement, the way they work within their system is really what kind of stuck with me and what my values have been since I started playing. I'm definitely am for the quick ball movement, team chemistry, and being able to play like that and translate that to my team is really, it has really been important to me. As you started to enter the high school level, right? Now, did you know the history of girls basketball before you got to Coventry? I didn't. I honestly had no idea. I knew um, I came into a team with a lot of seniors and they all graduated um, after my freshman year. And then we were left with like three or so seniors. And we started to become a really young team as our, um, as my years moved on. So right now we have three seniors, 
couple juniors and mostly freshmen playing with us at the varsity level. So um, I really had no idea like the history or that we hadn't been to the state championship in a while mm -hmm. or a conference championship or anything like that. When did it start to, you know, hit you that, you know, you would be one of the key cogs for the team? I mean, you were a key cog last year in a very tough game against Thomaston and a loss in Mohegan in Class S. Um, when did it start to hit you that, you know, you were the, like, I don't want to say main player because you talked about some other players to me, but you were one of the key players for this Coventry team that they were going to win a title since I think you said 1988, that you would be a part of that potentially. When did that hit you? Uh, I, I feel like my junior year, I was really able to realize the potential we had had. So after COVID hit during my freshman year and we didn't have an opportunity to play out the state tournament. And then my sophomore year, we had a 12 game season and we didn't have an opportunity for a state championship either, but coming into my junior year, we had five strong seniors and we had myself, um, a sophomore, and a couple other players on the team that really contributed. Mm -hmm. And it started to, I started to realize as our record started to grow, as we were beating great teams that, wow, like we ha really have an opportunity here to um, be in a state championship game, which is, has always been the dream for me since I was a freshman. Now, you talked about before we came on, I had no idea that you coached, you know, until we started talking and such before this. And that's awesome that you do to give back to the game and to now it's Coventry that you you coach the younger cats, right? Yeah, I coach a sixth grade boy travel team. Okay. in Coventry. So being able to do that, um, do you feel like because again, in in a lot of conversations I've had with athletes, they tell me that when they're away from the game, quote unquote, right, and they're just on the sideline. They see things differently than they would if they were playing. And it translates to them when they come back, if they're able to because of injury. Your case is different. God willing, you haven't gotten hurt. I'll knock on wood somewhere. But <laughs> you being able to coach, I mean, are you able to see certain things that maybe you were able to not at the time, but now, again, to go back to when you were watching UConn and, and Villanova and such, you bring with you to add to your toolbox? Mm -hmm. I definitely see a lot more while coaching on being on the sidelines and like trying to direct people of what to do is definitely um and trying to make the right decisions definitely influences the way I play I've realized a lot defensively I run the same press for my sixth grade boys as we do in our high school so I've really been able to figure out like where in my role on the team like to read I'm and like to read what passes to take away, like by trying to direct the players to do so. So it's definitely helped a lot in that sense. Now, the question is, have the young Coventry players listened to you? Do they listen well? Well, they do. They're sixth grade boys. So um, they're, they're a really funny group. They, I absolutely love them, but they are sixth great boy <laughs> so they do get a little um silly at times but it's all good and fun and we're just trying i'm just trying to get them to improve and to love the game like i did you know i had an opportunity to be able to talk with your head coach before this interview and i asked him send me like a, a bio a little bit on on yourself right and he, he mentioned and one of the first things was that you are a extension of not just the coaching staff, but just what being a team player is. I mean, you, you care about the team, you put the team first with everything. I could see the maturity side that he was talking about. Uh, what are your comments as far as on that? Because it's, he's pretty spot on. I, I really do pride myself on being a good teammate and being a team player. I try to do what's best for the team because really all I care about is winning. Like, Individual accomplishments are important to me to an extent of trying to, you know, it's always been my goal because getting individual accomplishments means um, kind of a good thing, good things to say about myself to get to college. But I've always really been trying to do what's best for the team, regardless of if it's me taking the credit or someone else taking the credit. Mm -hmm. I, my main goal is to be a good teammate and 
uh, try to influence others to work hard and take practice seriously and just love it. Now, with it being your senior year, um, and I mean, the season's going down like I mean, it, it flies by so quick. And currently right now, you guys are in one, two, three, four, five. You guys are in the top six for class S. You've got a 10 and four record as I'm looking at right now. It didn't say the summers game, what the result was. Did you guys win that game against summers? We lost, unfortunately, okay. it was a really close game. And they're, they were a really good team and we played well, but it just didn't go in our direction. Well, you know what? That's why, I mean, if you guys have an opportunity to play in the NCCC tournament, you know, could get payback for that, right? You never know. Yeah, we're hoping to. We really are because that's – we have a couple conference rivals, and mm -hmm. um, I'm friendly with Summers. I played with half their team for um, a couple of different AAU teams I was on, and they, they're they a really good team, but it would be really nice to get payback for that close loss. <laughs> well, you never know. It could happen. You just never, never know. But, you know, again, to go back to what I was saying, to be able to be in that spot again where you just – I mean, you're already in the playoffs. You've already got the eight wins. You're there. Now the question is going to be as far as seed, which I know you guys are not concerned with right now. You're just trying to win games, right? But if you guys keep this pace up, and I'm sure you want to win an NCCC title, I'm sure that would be – I don't know, has Coventry ever won an NCCC title or a title in conference in general? I'm I'm not sure the last time we have. I'm not sure even if we have. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure years ago we did, but – definitely not in a while and that's definitely another goal of mine for this year now and i'm glad that you mentioned that because i'll scrap my other question because it's not that important you talk about the goal aspect and i know um you have a lot going for you obviously you're doing the coaching uh side with the sixth grade boys in coventry you also are a very talented player you're going to western new england to be able to play basketball at the next level but you still have unfinished business from our conversations as far as wanting to win a title and to put this team in the record books for years to come. Do you ever feel any sort of added pressure with everything going on for yourself? I, I feel so much pressure all the time. <laughs> I have to, if I'm being honest, I really do. Like it's especially after it last year and having such a great season and losing five players who were always on the floor with me, five good seniors. Like I feel a lot of pressure to try to keep that up this year and, continue to have another great season but it's it's not easy I try to handle it well but I definitely get very stressed out on game days um I'm in the gym like two hours before a home game like getting a shot up um, before the JV game I try to shoot every day on the shooting gun a day before it's just to try to do my part and um helping the team win but it's it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> How do you, and I'm glad that you're honest with me and you just didn't say, no, I don't feel any pressure. I'm good. I'm, I'm whatever. I'm glad that you were honest with me. Cause that will <laughs> go to my next question, which is pressure is good, but I feel like, again, there's only so much that you can do. You're doing probably more than 99% of athletes in this state uh, that are doing, especially ones as talented as yourself. Are you able to, get away a little bit as far as to, because I'll, uh, you know, at some point I, I deal with it at work and sometimes too much pressure. You get bad migraines. You start feeling just some type of way for you. Are you able to get away? Maybe, you know, listen to some music or just have your own kind of woosah time to avoid that pressure too much of it, I should say. Yeah. I try to take time every night, like just to kind of be and get away from basketball a little bit. Um, it's not really easy to find that time as I have games two, three times a week. And then the day games, the days I don't have games, I have my own high school practice. Then I have to coach a practice. And then on top of that, I have homework. So it's not really easy to find that time, but usually the weekends are a little bit easier. I have, um, you know, mornings to sleep in on every Sunday morning. I get to sleep in because I don't have to wake up for school or practice and, mm -hmm. Sundays is kind of like a more relaxing day other than the game I have to coach. Um, but I try to just take some time for myself when I can. <laughs> now, where does the homework thing rank? Cause I heard it was last. Where does that rank? <laughs> um, it usually happens around nine o'clock every night. <laughs> try to get it done. 
Not before. better. Hey, as long as it gets done, it's all that matters. Yeah, right? it always gets done. I always do my homework, but it's a good thing. You, know, you have I. I'm productive in school and I use my study halls wisely. So I get as much done as I can then. And so I don't have to worry about it as much at night. Well, just think about, you'll be very, very prepared when it comes time for college, because I was just speaking with a young lady who played at Seymour, uh, Kenzie Surowich, very talented player, dealt with multiple injuries, but she has played in every game at Franklin and Pierce. And she talked about the, the regimen and kind of waking up, eating, practice, school, the whole nine. It sounds like for you, you going through, although very stressful, on top of the added pressure you already have, uh, you you know, you basically have prepared yourself for college, which I would think will lessen, hopefully, I hope, your stress when you go to Western New England. What says you? Yeah, I think that when I go there, it's going to be a lot of structure, which is really important to me. Um, they have, like, team lifts, team team like scrimmages in the off season um but it's very like having that structure when I go there is definitely going to be helpful as right now I have a lot of structure going on with scheduled practice every day school you have to you really have to be productive with your time and get things done um use your study halls wisely pay attention in class so you know what's going on to be able to manage this much so I feel like having that like drive right now is really going to help me for when I go to college. Well, Charlotte, I really appreciate you coming on a lot of fun being able to talk about Coventry uh, girls basketball and also yourself uh, before I let you go. Uh, what can people expect from the program and yourself as the season starts to wind down with the regular season and we get into the third season, which is playoff time for both the conference and States. I really hope that um, the conference and state tournament, we're going to make a far run in. Um, we've all been working very hard. My coach has really prepared us. He's done a great job with um, trying to get us like motivated to really want that. And we all really, we all really do, but I think it's more than just wanting it. It's having been there before to know what it feels like to be on the other end of it, mm -hmm. um, on the losing end. And being there, I think we really are going to do everything we can to try to get to the championship again and actually win it this time. Well, Charlotte, I really appreciate you, like I said before, coming on. Always a lot of fun being able to talk with the talents in the state. And hopefully you guys can get to that point again this season. And hopefully I'll be on the call for that because that would be awesome. And to be able to see Coventry make some history and for you guys to be in the record books, re record books I should say, uh, you know, which is very deserved for everybody involved. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. That'll wrap things up here on the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm a jury. Find them all. Enjoy their stay, everybody, and be well.